If you were computer shopping between 1986 and 1990, chances are you may have considered one of these. This is a Macintosh Plus. This is um, basically one of the most, or one of the longest production running machines Apple has ever had. Uh, second only to, uh, I believe it was the Apple IIe. This machine was in production almost unchanged um, from 1986 until 1990 when the Macintosh Classic basically took over as the compact Mac, the very last of the compact Macs. The Mac Plus is actually the last Macintosh to use the telephone cord style keyboard cable and the 9-pin DB9 um, mouse connector, which I'll show you right here. Which looks like a 9-pin serial port, but that's not what it is. The Mac Plus also featured a few enhancements that the 512 and the 128 did not have. Um, it has the round Apple serial connectors and a built-in SCSI controller card, uh, uh, controller interface. It also has a, I believe it's a 15 or 20 something pin um, floppy port. Now that will work with any Apple uh, floppy disk drive except for the ribbon cable drives. Um, you're probably wondering what the giant box sitting next to it is. <laughs> this is the external hard drive. Because the, the Mac Plus did not have an internal hard disk drive, in fact, that started in the SE, uh, FDHD model. Um, they required the use of an external hard disk drive. Usually an Apple Profile or uh, some similar external drive would have been used. Um, judging from the production dates on the hard drive itself and uh, the style of the Mac being it a um, not an original release, I'm going to say that this drive is original to this machine or was purchased at the same time. Now in the back, it just says Macintosh Plus. That's a dead ringer for a later uh, generation machine. The original Plus um, actually said Macintosh Plus 1 megabyte because in 1986, 1 megabyte of RAM was enormous. The external hard disk drive, on the other hand, uh, is actually quite large for its era. It is a 60, I believe it's a 65 megabyte drive, or 60, actually I think it's more of a 60. And the drive that cont that's contained in this box, even though it's not a genuine Apple box or anything, is actually a fairly decent drive. It contains a Seagate, I don't know the exact model, but it is a Seagate SCSI drive, five and a quarter inch half height drive. That was a very expensive drive in its time uh, because SCSI interfaces were primarily used uh, on Apple equipment and uh, to a lesser extent, or actually to a bigger extent, I think they were used heavily on the um, commercial grade PC market. The keyboard um, is a little bit of an improvement over the original. The original Apple keyboard did not have a number keypad, if I recall. Um, I should verify that though. Um, this does. Also has the Apple security cable. Apple at one point had their own security cables and they were not like the Kensington locks of today. They were actually flat and the cable would feature like a metal um, metal clip or so that would kind of that would get jammed into the socket. I don't know if they were removable or not or how they were. But anyway. This is the original keyboard and mouse that would have shipped with a, a later model Mac Plus. The M0100 mouse, and that was an M0110A M0 -A keyboard. So, since there is no internal hard disk drive, the Mac Plus has to make do with an 800K variable speed floppy disk drive. It is double-sided. Um, unfortunately, I can no longer read these on anything I have except for my my genuine um, Apple computers or my, my Macintosh PowerBooks. 
I tried copying a file to this uh, to a brand new 720k disk formatted as an 800 and I couldn't do it because my floppy drive my external USB floppy drive won't support the multi-speed function oh well um, another thing I noticed on the external drive is it is not the original drive contained in that box I can tell because the bolt holes don't quite line up the drive is held in by two screws and the, um, the SCSI ID selector and LED light are not connected. Um, I'm going to modify the box so that the drive does fit and I'm going to hook up the LED by soldering the wires directly to the board on the, on the drive. Um, so that way that works. Um, but I imagine the drive was replaced probably 20 years ago and it's been that way ever since. It's also one of the most unique sounding drives I've ever had. Um, it shows no signs of failure. It runs perfectly fine. But listen to it start up as we boot up the machine. <clears throat> now when booting up a machine like this you must start up the hard drive first and let it fully reach operating conditions before you can move on. Here we go. Drive is ready. Now we can start up the Mac. And that was the original Apple startup sound. That started in the 128 and was discontinued after the uh, Plus was discontinued. It's now going to look for the hard disk drive. While we're waiting for this machine to boot up, I'm going to talk a little bit about the machine itself, not as a, um, just basically this exact system. Now, I did find this in the trash with everything you see, and uh, luckily I actually have an original Mac Plus um, owner's manual downstairs that didn't come with this, but I had one anyway. Someone threw this away in this condition. I mean, I, I wiped it down with a cloth, that's about it. I didn't really clean it much. It has absolutely no visual blemishes, no sticker residue, no scratches, no dents, no cracks, nothing. It's not even dirty. The keyboard, I haven't even cleaned it. It is immaculate. Between the keys, it is absolutely pristine. I haven't seen anything like this in years. The thing is, Finding a machine like this in the trash today is getting very, very rare. Um, most of these older, older systems have already been discarded. This machine was probably discontinued use in, or they stopped using it probably in the mid-90s. So it's gone over 15 years unused. Most of its life unused. Most of what I see in the trash today varies. I mean, what I typically see, though, would be like Windows machines dating from 99, 2000-ish up until uh, about four, three to four years ago. I see a lot of those. A lot of Pentium 4s, Pentium 3s. I'm seeing fewer and fewer Pentium 2s in older machines. Um, I'm seeing a lot of Dell and HP laptops. I'm seeing a lot of uh, CRT stuff, um, mainly monitors. I saw one E-Machines E1, and I almost grabbed it, but I'm not going to touch one of those because it was missing half the parts anyway. It wasn't really worth my time. But I never see these. I mean, I see the occasional... Very occasional, though. I mean, and by that I mean uh, like mid-90s max. I don't see a lot of them. I see a lot of IMAX, a lot of uh, all-in-one IMAX, the, um, the uh, mostly the uh, DV error machines. But I don't see a lot of machines this old. It's becoming fewer and far between. 
But when I do see them, I grab them. Uh, typically, regardless of condition, because they're good for parts for people trying to restore them. So if you happen to see a Mac Plus or any compact Mac, hang on to it because they're getting hard to find and the prices are going up again on eBay. I'm seeing these now selling for about $100. For a while they weren't selling for much at all. At one point the Mac Plus was so prolific that you couldn't walk down the street without kicking one on the side of the curb. I mean they were so popular that there were so many made but now they're starting to die off. The other thing is when you see one of these Typically the screen is already starting to cave in on the sides. Um, they whistle, they hum, you know, there's a lot of things that go wrong in the Mac Plus because it doesn't have a cooling fan. You'll notice that Apple started using cooling fans in the Mac SE immediately after Steve Jobs left Apple. They started using cooling fans. And you'll notice that almost immediately after Jobs returned, they stopped using cooling fans until they really had to start using them again when, when you know the processor started getting fast enough to require them. I thought that was interesting. Steve Jobs actually did hate cooling fans. He really did. It's kind of funny. But anyway, um, so because of these lack of cooling fans, a lot of these Mac Pluses died because they overheated. You know, they were stressed out too much for too long and um, the analog boards would start to fail and that would cause screen issues sometimes they wouldn't even turn on but to find one in this condition is just so incredibly rare I, I was I was flabbergasted when I found it but let's go ahead and take a look at what I have on it I just rebuilt this hard drive using my um, my PowerBook 180 because this Mac doesn't have a built-in super drive and all my discs all my software is on 1.44 meg floppies I'm going to have to start transferring some of them to 800K. I have three boxes of 800K disks that I can use. Brand new disks. I started stockpiling them a few years ago. But anyway, let's take a look at what's on this drive and we'll start, maybe we'll play a game on it and see how it runs. My first Mac, the first one I ever acquired, was a Mac Plus. It was an original owner Mac. I got it free with a printer. Uh, laser right an uh, image writer too and uh, I had a lot of fun with it I had a game called Apache Strike that I used to like playing I found it online but it's in a .dsk file and I can't figure out a way to extract it without installing emulator software I do that but my Mac um, laptop is running Lion so whatever I do I'm gonna have to do it on this eMac here that's my uh, my little power PC baby there. Um, let's see how Brickles runs on this thing. I'm running System 7.1. I think I mentioned that earlier. Fresh build, just for the Mac Plus. I'm going to change some parameters here. And we're going to change the screen. I don't like that screen color. Now you got to remember now, this is... This is a, a very old machine. I mean, this machine, from 1988, I'm going to estimate is when it was made. It's 20... about 24 years old. <laughs> I mean, look at how well it runs. It's just amazing. It's slow. But it's 23 years old. In computer years, that's 150. It's practically an antique. And it's so simple. I'd open this up for you, but I, I don't have the tool that I used to have to open these. I made my own tool to uh, get those deep screws back here and up in the handle area. But I don't have it anymore, so I can't get it open, unfortunately. I have to get a new one or make a new one. But anyway, they're very simple inside. There's, you know, basically two circuit boards, the analog board and the logic, um, and the logic board. And uh, they're very small boards. There's not a whole lot of stuff on them. In typical Apple, early Apple engineering, they're very simple. The cases are signed inside. If I take the case off, you can see all the signatures. Um, they're, of course, they're not really signed. They're just uh, engraved or embossed. Um, 
and you've got one floppy drive bay. There's no fan, there's no hard drive bay, there's nothing in, like that inside. They're very simple machines. Now you could theoretically hack one of these to install an internal drive, but we're not going to do that because I don't like to uh, modify vintage equipment like that. But people do it. I've never seen it done, but I know it can be done. Let's uh, try a different game. I have some original Apple games, or original Apple shareware, not really Apple, but from a um, from people who generated software for these things. Um, games that only run properly on the 68K Max, the 68,000 Motorola Max. Uh, they don't run that well on others. Like this board, this pool game was designed in 1985 apparently and uh, which would have been the Mac 512 that's what it would have used so let's see how it runs on this oh like crap the sound is terrible but you get the idea oh there's another game I used to love it's called I think it's called Tank Let's quit that. I used to run these games straight off floppy disks. I think it was, um... Got a lot of cool stuff on here. Yeah, there it is. Let's get tanked. That's, that was a good one. Let's see how that runs. And this game dates back to... 1980... what? Okay, well, we could send him money, but I don't think he's still alive. I don't see a copyright date here. Alright, let's play the game. The object is to shoot the opposite tank, the opposing tank, using your mouse to control. Oh, keeping the mouse within that window there. Come on. I got hit. He sunk my battle tank. You have to shoot him before he shoots you. See, it's kind of difficult when you have very limited control. But anyway, you get the idea. It's a Mac Plus. Seen one, you've seen them all. I'm going to show you one more thing. In typical Steve Jobs fashion. It's funny because Steve Jobs had absolutely nothing to do with the Mac Plus. Anyway, back here, we have a clock battery. That's not the original battery. It's been changed. Um, but just be aware of that. If that battery is leaking, throw it away. If it's not leaking, meh. Alright, I think I'm going to probably upload this video now. So. Well, I hope you guys have enjoyed. Let's go ahead and shut down our Mac Plus. Turn off the machine first, it doesn't really matter. Until we meet again.